I want to tell you a story, a story that I think deserves to be told, a story about a truly remarkable dog and how he found himself with a 20-year-old girl and would then go on to change the course of her life. The story is about Finn and in Finn's honour, I'm going to try and get through this entire video today. The story starts in 2014 and to be specific, it was the 10th of June. And on the 10th of June that year, I was sat on Facebook and I saw a video. I'll show you a recording of it now. It was a video of a dog inside a kill pen with a number of other dogs. The dog in question that we're gonna be focusing on in this story is the collie that stands alone and lost inside the pen, not fighting for food and refusing to eat and generally staying away from anything that he thinks is scary. That dog is Finn. And this is the first time I'd ever seen him. I remember how I felt that day and in the comments, you can still see my comment in there underneath those from all of the other supporters who were working to try and save dogs in these conditions. Val from Val Grays was the first person to comment on this from the UK as far as I'm aware and offer him a safe space and a sanctuary as a collie specific rescue, although honestly Val will take anything that's in need. It was a particularly special case that they wanted to step in and resolve. You see, the thing is, is that the 10th of June 2014 was a Tuesday. This video was filmed on the Monday. The next Monday, in exactly six days time from the posting of this, 800 dogs in this kill shelter were going to die, and that included Finn. There was a lot of confusion that happened after this video was posted and after Val's response and me contacting her to say that I would offer this dog a home because we didn't know if Finn had even been taken out. We didn't know if he'd been saved. We didn't know if he was going to be okay because in Romania, at least at that time, I don't know what happens now, when dogs are pulled from shelters, the kill shelters as they're called, basically just a slaughterhouse, they are castrated and then placed somewhere else. They're castrated or euthanized, and that's their only two options. And euthanasia was often with toxic chemicals, the cheapest things that people could find, such as paint stripper, and castrations and spays were sutured up with rope. Some of the things that are seen coming out of these places are truly barbaric. And Finn was one of very, very, very few lucky ones. He was picked up, taken out, and held in safety whilst he was awaiting his vaccinations to be able to travel to the UK. And Ramona had his back. She watched him like a hawk and she made sure that he was at least safe. The only dates that I have available for this period of time are the ones that are inside this, the passport that Finn came to the UK with. His Romanian passport states that he was cleared for transport to the UK on the 13th of October 2014, which weighs up quite correctly, to be honest, because I know for a fact that I picked him up on the 18th. We'll pause here to reference the fantastic work that Val Gray's Border Collie Rescue does. I've had rescues for years and Finn was definitely not my first, but Val seems to always be the one to take the dogs who have literally nowhere else to go. Whether they're local strays down her way in the southeast of England or coming from a different country altogether, she will step in when everybody else does not. Since the start of the week, the week that I'm recording this, we've already managed to raise £2,000 for Val and Val Gray's Border Collie Rescue, which is a tiny rescue who receives zero grant funding, no government support and nothing from big donors. So if anything in the rest of this story hits you and you feel something, please consider donating whatever pennies you can to save the next Finn. Now Val trusted me and that was an important part. She was one of the first people who did trust me, but she trusted me to offer this complex case the right placement. And that was a huge risk. I was 20 years old. I'd only just moved out of the family home. I'd had experience with rescues before, but nothing quite at this level. Because when Finn came home and I picked him up from transport and I brought him back into safety and security, I knew we wouldn't have no idea what we were letting ourselves in for. And the truth is, is that he was absolutely terrified, understandably so, but he was terrified of everything. His main trigger was traffic and men. So those were two things that I knew something really bad had happened in the past. Of course, being in that kind of a situation in a country that views dogs as a lot of the population there does, 
it was no surprise really to hear that dogs on the street are often swerved at by vehicles. And so a moving vehicle for Finn was always just one step too far. He'd dive into hedgerows, he would hide himself in driveways if a vehicle so much as came and approached him on a street. That's something that we worked on alongside all of his other fears. He was really terrified of men, and especially if they were carrying something long, like a mop, like a broom, like a piece of two by four for home renovations, which throughout the course of this video, you'll see I lived in a lot of those. The mess that you will see in the following videos is not something I would normally share, but it was very much real life. Another big fear he had, which is understandable again from the catch poles, is slip leads. Anything that tightened around his neck sent him into an absolute frenzy. He'd guard anything that he considered his bed, and whatever he was atop at that specific moment was his safe place. But within a couple of days, I was ultimate safety because I promised him that I would never let him feel fear. I would never let anybody cause him pain. And I also would never, ever push him faster than he needed to go himself. And those things are promises that as far as I know, I've kept for the following 10 years that are about to come. And as his fear regression was so obvious at that point, I knew that my main task was to just make sure he felt like he was safe. Everything had to be at his speed on his terms. And that was something that I 100% respected. And I always advocated for him in every situation. So although I was ultimate safety after a few days, it took a long time before the man that I was living with in that house at the time was just as safe. Even just a few weeks ago, if we fast forward through more of the story, you'd still find Finn having a grumble if someone other than me asked him to move off of whatever he deemed was his bed. Over the course of the next two years, I managed to unpick a lot of the fear and reconditioned Finn to knowing that everything was safe, especially if I was there next to him. So there was never a situation where he was left in a panic. However, as is true with most of the Rummy dogs, he was always a little bit unpredictable when it came to being off lead, not because he would have run away necessarily, but because he was so easily spooked. So almost all of the time he remained on lead and for him, his lead that he preferred was a flexi lead. Now I'd never normally advocate for flexi lead, so do not come at me and freaking out, don't come at me for this video anyway. But flexi leads are one thing that I'm usually completely opposed to. However, with Finn, he never hit the end of his lead. He never, ever pulled. No tension was ever on his lead, I don't think, in the history of Finn Finn. And for him, having that flexi lead meant he could stop and sniff whenever he wanted to, which, as everything was on his terms, that was absolutely fine with me. After those kind of first few years, we got to the point where Finn could go to very busy places and indeed Finn actually did go to Crufts. So a little bit of a remarkable turn of events in itself is that this dog who was terrified of everything and everyone ended up going to Crufts and in true Finn fashion, he just went to sleep. We learned also throughout this period that he had an uncanny ability to never get his feet wet. Honestly, if there was an alternative option, even if it was unconventional, Finn would take it. He hated water. He good damn hated water. And in fact, it reminds me of a time where we were out walking one day for a walk and the rain started to come down so heavy and he really did not like being wet. And he dived off of the path to the left. And I was like, where the heck's he going? I follow him around and where do I find him lying, almost as though he'd been there for hours, underneath a giant leaf to ensure his head did not get wet. Alongside this, he always found somewhere comfortable to sleep. And it didn't matter really where he was because he'd find something that he could commandeer as his bed. Even if it was a laundry basket or someone's sofa, a pile of blankets, it didn't really matter. As long as he had somewhere to sleep, he was always happy. His other love was the sunshine. He absolutely loved being in the sun, genuinely. Any sun that he could find, he lied in. We often said Finn was more cat than dog, and I think that both of these different loves for him prove that insurmountably. He didn't really like exercise, walking wasn't his thing, but if we did go out and go away, he did enjoy those little steps out as long as we didn't go too far. 
obviously he did also love food and although in the first few days he wouldn't touch anything unless he saw another dog eat it first, he soon had an absolute passion for breakfast time. Breakfast and dinner time for Finn were the highlights of his days and those were the moments where up until the end all you could do was laugh at his exuberance and bounciness for having his breakfast. His favorite game though was hide the cheese and you had to use mugs for this, you know, like having a cup of tea mug because what he would do is find the cheese but then he would also take claim over the mug that the cheese was found under, picking it up so delicately, never to cause any damage to himself or the object and then remove it and take it to his bed for safekeeping. Although I did try really, really hard, it became apparent very quickly that Finn was never going to become a trick dog. Like, honestly, this dog was like, no, not gonna happen. I did try with a few different things, but we chalked it up to experience because actually once he'd got whatever he wanted and there was very few things that he actually did be reinforced by, he would go back to pretending he knew absolutely no other English, even 10 years on. That didn't change. That being said, we did go to dog training class. Like we actually did try, um, but it wasn't to go and actually train him. In fact, I used the dog training class in his first few months as a method of exposing him to other dogs in a really safe, co controlled and conditioned manner in a way that wasn't gonna put him at risk or set him backwards on his fear aggression fixing. And so by week three in this dog training class, we managed to remove all visual barriers that were blocking his sight of the other dogs in the room. And then week five saw him walking calmly around the room with his best friend, which was a very quiet greyhound. Week six saw our graduation test. And although we'd not been working on any of the behaviors that everyone else had, Finn did in fact win the one minute stay partly because he fell asleep. <laughs> so he went to sleep in that one minute of being put in position and he was quite happy and content to sleep for the duration. I had to wake him up to let the other dog have another go, but whatever, we graduated. Most of you who have seen Finn, especially over the last four years, will probably have thought he didn't really engage with other dogs in any way and he always just spent his time chilling and sleeping, but you couldn't be farther from the truth because after the first couple of months of Finn being at home, that's when Alfie arrived. And although there were a couple of occasions where dangerous things happened, and I'll cover those towards the end of the story, he was so good at being around other dogs. And if I'd brought a dog into the home, Finn knew that they were then safe. And what happened was he would always be the perfect educator for canine body language. He would tell another dog exactly how and when to do things in a really, really, really calm and sensitive manner. And actually Alfie and him became absolute best friends. And even growing up from a tiny puppy all the way through to Alfie being full grown, you couldn't really separate these two. They were, by all intents and purposes, brothers and they played like brothers all the way through. No matter how many puppies we added or fosters that came into the home, Finn was always going to be a constant. He really was truly Grandpa Finn. I guess you could say that life didn't have a consistent path for me and when my life turned upside down, theirs did too. And so when his whole concept of safety in his location that he called home since being in Romania was ripped away in a 24 hour period, I really worried about how he was going to handle that. But in true Finn fashion, he found himself a bed in our new location and then continued to do his sporadic bouncy episodes with other dogs too. He loved big open spaces, big open spaces where he could see that there was no threat. And there's nothing better than that big open space being whipped around by wind. At least 20 miles an hour was required for Finn to feel content with the wind blowing through his hair. But from the very start to the very end, big open spaces, sunshine on his back and the wind in his fluff was his happy place to be. Often I'd actually catch him sitting out in the garden, staring at nothing in particular, just letting the wind hit him. And that for me always brought a smile to my face. Moving again, this time to our full family that we have now with Dan Dan was another moment where I did worry, but I needn't have, to be honest, because he claimed all soft furnishings as his own at that point. And it was here that Piper came home. So little puppy Pippi, who was feral <laughs> for the most part, was 
one of those dogs that Finn just did his routine with. And I have little clips of this because smartphones actually existed properly at this stage. And it, what Finn would do is he would go and take himself up onto an object out of the reach of the small pterodactyl that was learning to run around and eat stuff on the floor. And you'd find him asleep with the puppy nearby, always close proximity, but not necessarily touching. And as the puppy grew and developed and got even more feral, you'd find that that would be the moment that Finn would start to connect. Finn would teach them how to play with respect, with care, with real consent if we were picking words out of a hat there and with Piper I thought she would be a bit too much for him but actually it turned out that they were fairly well matched they would play and Pippi would tone her play down a little bit as well just to make sure that she wasn't being overly boisterous but even as Pippi grew up and we moved again to the place where I'm filming this now their play never did stop but it was moving to where we are now that really saw Finn shine. Although at this stage he was nearly just about nine, ten years old, he never really run around. Like running for the for the love of running just wasn't a Finn thing to do unless he was playing with another dog. But here he had space and here he felt safe and here he ran. Aside from the space that we had that he could sit in the sun to his heart's content, he also loved the fire. He loved sitting in front of the fire, watching the world go by from one of the window seats, or just finding a new comfy place to call his bed. And this was also the first time that he'd ever laid on somebody other than me. He found his safety in Dan, whose kindness and calm, compassionate approach he also felt was pure and ultimate safety. He still hated water though. That thing will never change. And he often opted at this stage to not go for walks. He'd rather stay at home, asleep, but sometimes he would come out still. And you'll see that a little bit later on. And then of course, COVID hit. And this is where you guys kind of join in with the story in terms of what we've shared from us on our YouTube channel. However, one thing COVID did mean was that we stopped going to agility shows. We, sh we stopped competing. And that meant that Finn had to give up his favorite thing, which was obviously to sleep, but in tub chairs. So he loved the tub chairs that we had when we were camping. However, also stopping agility also meant that he didn't have to share a crate with a weirdo. And so, you know, you win some, you lose some. What 2020 did mean though was that Bright came home, another puppy added to the pot here, and you all watch this. And although he was never really front and center in any of our resources that we shared either here in the membership or on online courses, because he didn't really like to be far away from me outside of the home, you did see him in Bright Diaries where he always was upon his throne or supporting as a stooge dog in a way that did not provide a big distraction for a puppy when they're learning their self-control around distractions. You did, however, see 11-year-old Finn for a short stint in the off-camera flash Big Sky video. That's the one that is on YouTube. And in all fairness, his ears rocked that shop and because he was in his own garden, he loved taking part and obviously eating the snacks. You guys even edited 12-year-old Finn, this time in the online advanced outdoor canine portrait course, where he was in a bonus edit, and I saw some of your edits, and they filled my heart with pure joy. I'm so glad that he was able to help others in some way. Um, nothing will touch how much he helped me, but it's nice that he was part of it. 13-year-old Finn was also spotted, this time in Shit Hot Shots, which was filmed right at the top of the Highlands in Scotland. I knew that this would be his last stay away trip. I didn't think he would make that Christmas, if I'm being honest. But I wanted him to have a nice adventure and he did one day on, one day off, resting a lot in between the trips to the locations we needed to film. And you all know one of the images shot inside, which has seen recognition in international competition too. But whilst there, Finn ran. He ran off leash for the first time on a beach ever. I knew he couldn't get too far away. In all fairness, I knew it was safe. But that was probably one of the best 30 minutes of my time with Finn. Because you could tell he was really happy. And he was really safe. And he was with his family. And he was loved. 
Although that was his last stay away trip, 14 year old Finn did come with us to the lakes where we shot some stuff just for me personally and I shot my favourite image of Finn. You'll see an amendment to that at the end of this video so if you were here for anything photography related please stick around. We can't forget the time that Finn actually featured inside one of my qualification panels. I think he actually featured in both, although the first one really wasn't that good. This one um, from my fellowship panel of the conceptual art was one that I just really wanted him to be part of this because I had a feeling that it wouldn't be long until we lost him. And I'm so glad that he was in that. The fact that his image was in it and it mattered just like he did is really important to me. I did think that he wouldn't feature in anything else again, but in a moment of probable insanity in Studio Bootcamp's high key live studio shoot, I thought, why not let Finn have a go? Because with this setup that we were using at that point, it didn't really matter where the dog was in the set. So having a dog that knows zero commands and basic behaviors with consistency was fine. And so Finn came out and I'm so glad he did because those were the last images that I shot of him. He was so good in that. He absolutely loved chewing my thumbnail, which was probably his favorite thing. Looking at cheese, although sometimes he couldn't actually see it particularly well, and just generally being the absolute legend of a gangster that he was. I'd mentioned a few times in different places that at the start of summer, 2023, I'd noticed that he started to lose his marbles more than they probably already were. But it wasn't until the last two weeks of January 2024 that I started to notice a real significant change and I knew something more, much more, was now happening. Fast forward to Monday the 5th of February, I just finished Ren's dinner time training, which would have been included and will be included in Ren Diaries. And I walked into the room where all of our dogs rest and sleep and I found Finn like this. It was so eerily similar to Finn here, just out of the kill shelter. And I knew instantly something was very, very wrong. We raced to the vets to see if anything could be done, but after a few non-invasive tests, because Finn freaking hated the vets with a passion, there was nothing that could be done, and it was his time. I promised him I wouldn't cry until he'd gone, and I made Dan promise the same so that he wouldn't know anything was any different, and instead I chatted to him about all of the things I've talked about in here already, and the two separate times he picked up a knife and then a hammer and walked purposefully towards 12-week-old Alfie around about 10 years ago, reminiscent of his obvious connections to the Romanian mafia. He really always was a gangster. I mean, you can't deny that. And after a quick kiss on the forehead, something we did most days, he got his comfy vet bed and lied down for a head scratch. I held his head in my hands as he went to sleep for the last time. And honestly, it was the most peaceful, love-filled, calm and dignified end you could possibly imagine. I am so glad that I didn't leave him alone like so many owners would do at that point because it's too hard for them. Because for Finn, he knew no different. He was just having a scratch on a bed and then he went to sleep. I was absolutely honored to have known this dog. And I'm so glad that some of you guys met him, that a lot of you guys saw him in some way, shape or form. And perhaps maybe you are part of his legacy that will be left behind. And although you may have forgotten about Finn because he wasn't front and center in everything over the years. He will never be forgotten. He was very, very special. And it all started really with that video on Facebook and Val Gray's Border Collie Rescue. He taught me to cherish the little things like the sunshine on your skin, the summer breeze sweeping across your face, quiet nights in front of the fire, but above all that safety does exist with the right people around you. Trust can be rebuilt, even if it was absolutely shattered beforehand. And wherever there may be darkness, there is always also light. I needed to tell his story because it is one of resilience. It is one of love and it matters. And so for Finn, you mattered, you were loved, and I'll see you again.